Hey, Tyler. What's up? Hey, Leah. <laughs> I want to play a game spoken in creepy saw guy voice. I never saw a saw. Really? No. Are you kidding me? Does that look like something I would watch? I would I would play that game we were playing with you. What game? Hey, that's pretty cool, actually. There's this little thing that traps a spider so you can let it go and keep it away from you. BM fan. Can I people, think I was just looking at your message. Can people hear us? Uh, oh, yeah. Can What's you guys hear on, us? What's going on, Leo? Um... Death Spell Omega. There's Ben Webb. That means we shouldn't see it. Ben Webb said we should. <laughs> yeah, it was like The Walking Dead. I think that's what it was, The Walking Dead. But it was we, when we went to play the games with the kids. And yeah, they said this and it sounds good. And I was like, oh, let's go play that game. And like, but he was scared. <laughs> scary for me and Vin kept saying shoot that guy shoot that guy you would to shoot these arrows into their heads actually you know what I did like when they would turn either blue or green depending on which one of us got it because every oh. time every oh, time yeah. we got a blue I was like that's right yeah we gotta <laughs> um we gotta we gotta buy that game really yeah why not oh my gosh can we get a two-player game was like I in that? shorts today when I was playing against uh yep Dorian unfortunately oh <laughs> it's a rather personal picture, but okay. <laughs> okay. We finished Vikings. We're as far as we can go. What's up? D Miller 661. Somebody call me up if you have an issue with Jordan Peterson. But I, I need to know. I need like exact references, though. Don't say I don't like him because he's whatever. Dan, what the heck? Dan's like, I don't like Jordan Peterson because he's Canadian. Canadian. I have lots of problems with Peterson. That's a long discussion. Jordan Peterson was like, I couldn't believe that anybody didn't like him. I was like, what? We're on Do Not Disturb on Skype. Oh, crap. Okay. Wow, how did you Who know that? Because BM Fanny is probably trying to talk to yeah, us. Yeah, but does it say... That we're on Do Not Disturb, or he just knows because we're. we're I will to call. personally take you off of Do Not Disturb. BM fam. Tell me how you knew. Did it say it on your end? All right, we have our first contestant. Hello. Hello. What's up? What's up? This is BM fan again. What's going oh, on, hey. BM fan? Hey, how did you know that it was on um, Do Not Disturb? Does it say it on your end, or you were calling? Yeah, it is. It had the, um, the the red icon or whatever, and it says "Do not disturb" on it. Oh, okay, cool. Alrighty, so God, there are so so many topics. Um, since you since you were last talking about Peterson, um, I'll admit I'm not the most knowledgeable on Peterson, but from what I have seen, I can obviously see the issues with him, uh, particularly when he talks about politics. I have no issue with him talking about. His Jungian psychology, that's, that, that is what it is. But when he starts trying to apply these things to actual politics, and he starts throwing out phrases like postmodern neo-Marxist, which is basically utterly nonsensical, uh, that's when we start having issues. Well, why do you have an issue with the term postmodern neo-Marxist? Do you think that you think that all these people on the left, do you think that they're all internally consistent with themselves? I mean, Marxism doesn't it's not compatible with postmodernism no but that's why i asked that question do you believe that all of these folks on the left that they're completely consistent with themselves um in what manner well i understand the inconsistencies between postmodernism and, and marxism but for example yesterday i had a guy on and he said that there were no absolutes like I had a I had a guy on and he claimed that he lived a certain type of lifestyle, but yeah. then upon further investigation, there are certain things that he did that were completely diametrically opposed to that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, something like that I would argue is based on a presupposition. Something like what? Like a notion in 
obviously in order to say that there is no absolutes, it, you, you would have to imply that there not being absolutes is an aspect of absoluteness or whatever. But I mean, I, I think you could argue that that's kind of like a more of a presupposition or an axiom uh, that you base your worldview on. So it kind of like leaps over the uh, the circular aspect of it. So you don't think there are anybody, there are any uh, postmodernist Marxists in the world? I mean, if they're a true Marxist, probably not. Well, that's my point, is that people, I think you're criticizing Peterson from an idealistic perspective in the sense that, yes, if you just look at the technical definitions of those terms, they're diametrically opposed to each other, but the people that are foisting, at least the people that are camping out on the left wing side, like for me, for example... I mean, here's the thing, though. Do you think these people are all reading, uh, like, Foucault? No, I don't. I And that's my point. I don't think so. Like, for example, when I criticize atheists and they've never read Bertrand Russell, Voltaire, or Nietzsche. I had an atheist tell me yesterday that Voltaire and Nietzsche have nothing whatsoever to do with atheism on any level. I mean, to a to... How can I put this? To me, at least, with regards to something like atheism, atheism is just outright not believing in something. It's, I mean, not believing in, in God. I can understand how you can say, well, you should understand the early atheists and whatnot and understand their worldview a little more and whatnot. But I think any anyone can really just say that I'm an agnostic atheist or something like that without having that's, you know, read those uh, thinkers. That's fine, BM, but this person told me that Voltaire and Russell and Nietzsche do not speak to atheism on any level. That's what they told me yesterday. So, I mean, I think you're assuming that people that hold to positions hold to them as rigorously as you do, and I don't think that that's the case at all. So when Peterson says postmodern Marxist, yeah, it's inconsistent, but isn't that Peterson basically like low-key dissing people that hold to that position because... They don't even realize how inherently contradictory their their worldview is. Um, I, mean, I guess you could argue that. I think the other issue, though, is that it 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 sounds very much like a conspiracy theory. How so? The Marxist um, part. I, I I assume you're familiar with uh, cultural Bolshevism. Yes. Okay. And, and the cultural Marxism of the of uh, the popular scare buzzword of the right today, um, which kind of just echoes back to Peterson's postmodern neo Marxists. Yeah. Um, which I mean, I'm not saying Peterson is like anti-Semitic or anything, but obviously that's kind of the root word of all of that kind of notion. I'm not saying his postmodern neo-Marxism is cultural Marxism, but it's really, really kind of similar sounding. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. I agree with that. I think you're right on that. I think he's careless when he uses that terminology. I don't think he's anti-Semitic. I do think he's careless, though. So. Um, it did take him a long time to actually come out about that. Yeah. Uh, like there are videos of like his his supporters kind of basically trying to get him to talk about the Jewish question, and he's just like, yeah, I just can't, I just can't talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so. So so that's your problem with Peterson. Um. Well, also comparing um, humans to lobsters. That's that's kind of another aspect to it. <laughs> Well, like see, you can't look at hierarchies and lobsters and compare it to humans. But it, what was the point he was trying to make about the lobsters? Oh, God, I don't even remember. <laughs> well, see, this is this is the thing that gets me about people that criticize Peterson. It's like, oh, you can't. Co I mean, it's a it's an analogy. It's not a one to one correlation. He's just like, do, let me ask you a question. Do you believe that that human beings can function without hierarchy? Um, yeah. Okay, give me an example of when that's happened in, in human history. Um, I mean, like, you, we've had, uh, like, like I mentioned last time, like, uh, anarchist Catalonia and stuff. Like, we have had anarchist, um, kind of societies. Where? As mentioned, anarchist Catalonia. How long, um, how another long? Another example would be... Hold on, no, 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 hold on, stay, stay sure. with me. 
Yeah. Anarchist Catalonia. Where where is that? Uh, that was in Catalonia, which is not Spain. Which is Catalonia's Catalonia during the Spanish Civil War. Okay, how long did that last? Uh, two years before the fascists and the Republicans uh, smashed them. Okay, and why did they smash them? Because the Catalonians were obviously breaking apart from the Republicans in Spain, and obviously the fascists also did not like them. So they basically had to fight off like multiple different fronts, and they, they couldn't survive it. How were they able to fight? Did they organize a military? Uh, yeah. Are you saying that they had a military that had no hierarchy? Everybody was just out on the battlefield doing their own thing. Um, it's actually a good question. I'm not entirely sure how their military was set up. I would bet you my firstborn that they had some sort of hierarchy. It's impossible to fight otherwise. Believe me, I know. Because... Uh, but, Tyler, uh, Catalonia was anarcho-syndicalist. Yeah, but, but I mean, look, you... you <laughs> You just said that they had to go fight, and if they had to fight, that means that there was a military, and that that means that they were that there had to be some sort of structure to it. I mean, obviously, like uh, I mean, there's some degree of it, but the reality is that the the hierarchies don't necessarily have to be in in such a uh, what's the word a negative way, I guess, that we kind of view them today. Well, I don't view hierarchy as negative. I view it as natural. I don't. I don't. I don't view hierarchy as a negative thing. Who, okay, I would disagree with that. I don't think it is natural. Well, then how comes human civilization always defaults to it if it's not natural? Um, I mean, you, you you presented one hierarchy, one hierarchy less society, which I'm very skeptical of, and they disintegrated after two years. Well, I mean, they disintegrated. Specifically because of aggression from opposing forces. My brother, there will always be aggression from opposing forces in the world. That's why every nation in the world has a military. Right? Uh, yeah. Okay, and that's one of the reasons that hierarchy is necessary, because of human aggression. I, that, that's irrelevant from hierarchy, though. What do you mean it's irrelevant from hierarchy? So, like, yeah, they had a military, uh, except they basically had the entire you know, world against them. They didn't have the entire world against them. It was just... I a... mean, I'm saying they had the entire world. They basically had everything surrounding them was against them. Yeah, and they could they order... The actual, um, the actual Republicans, they had the fascists, and they also had the... Um, what is it? The, uh, the Stalinists. Yeah, and they couldn't organize to defend themselves, could they? No, they weren't defending. They were defending very, very well. Okay, so you're saying that they orga they organized the military and there was no hierarchy in the military. I mean, I don't have an actual source on their military, but like, their like society itself was not hierarchical. Take a guess. Do you think they had a hierarchy less military? I mean, do you want me to like Google this? No, I want you to I just want you to tell me from from your just guess. You think they're out there on the front lines just doing whatever they wanted to do? There was no, I mean, there's nobody training uh, them, commanding them, telling them where to go, what was the best strategy, and all that. There, I mean, that may have been happening, but I don't necessarily think that person was viewed particularly, um, you know, specially. Okay, so explain. Okay, so this this is interesting to me. You're saying hierarchy is unnatural. Then why does it show up in every human society aside from those, which is the exception that proves the rule? Um, well, how about, because I mean, we're technically also just talking about, um, philosophy here. How do you feel about people like Rousseau? Well, it depends on which version of Rousseau you're talking about. Uh, Rousseau's general will. <sighs> I feel you're setting me up for your, to, to circle back to your hierarchy question. Is that what you're doing? Tell the truth. I mean, I'm basically saying... I if can hear it in your voice, BM. Views of uh, nature or the state of nature, so well, uh, you can have individuals like Rousseau who viewed the state of nature as being a very, you know, good, kind location, 
wherein you could have uh, total democracy and not hierarchical general will that would kind of determine the, the, the shape of society. Or you have people like Hobbes or whatever who view the state of nature as nasty, brutish, and short. Well, well, let's stay, let's stay with Rousseau for a second. Sure. Um, here's the thing that gets me about philosophers sometimes. Sometimes I feel like they're so stuck in their ivory tower that it doesn't take into account actual human nature. Like, are you more Rousseau than Hobbes in your uh, assumptions about human nature? It, it, honestly, it depends on the kind of the day. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, you know what, Hobbes is right, humans are shit. Uh, and then other times I'm like, no, we can we can do better. Um, it, it really depends. <laughs> okay. So, so then you're... You, so you're actually saying that you believe that not having hierarchy is the most natural state of, of human existence. So like if I, I've got three kids, we should all have equal say about what goes down in the house. Four kids. Father of the year, ladies and gentlemen. We should all have equal say about what goes on in the house. like a family uh, that's a good question because I'd have to actually think about it from um, from like if I if I was like a parent how I would actually raise my kids well I guarantee you my brother you would you you would be initiating that hierarchy with the quickness because you know what's gonna happen little Susie as cute as she is when she goes into Walmart she's gonna take that chocolate bar and you gotta tell her that she can't steal shit, right? Yeah. You gotta impose your will on her, don't you? And who are you to do that? I mean, let's just be real. I want I want a philosophy that works in terra firma, BM. You're a much more intelligent man than me, but just work with me. <laughs> Trust me, I'm not. I am not very intelligent. Well then, um, then I'm out of luck then, because you're you're much you're you're light years ahead of me. But I'm serious. Uh, you're gonna let her go into Walmart and take whatever she wants? I mean, obviously no. Um, okay, let me let me rephrase this. I think that humans, if not that hierarchy is non natural, then I think we should at least strive towards non hierarchy. See, this is, this is, okay, so here, here's the thing for me, is that my presupposition is that the family is a building block for a given society. It's been that way for the majority of human history. The societies are simply collections of families. Okay, well, if that's the case, and hierarchy is absolutely obvious and natural in a family unit. I mean, that's, I'm still not going to say hierarchy is natural. Well, I'm talking about in the real world. You just said that you would impose your value system on your child. Sure. Okay, that's a form of hierarchy, isn't it? Um. If Susie says, why should I listen to you, Dad? You're going to say what? Because uh, I'm your uh, father, which is inherently a hierarchical and unfortunately for you, patriarchal uh, answer, isn't it? Sure. Okay. Let me, let me be more provocative. If you didn't impose your value system on your little child, you would be a bad parent, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Well, when we say so-and-so spoils their children, what are we saying? Yeah, in that case, it would be something like that. Oh. Yeah, I, I can see it there. Okay, so now watch the syllogen. The family is the building block of society. Families yep. are inherently hierarchical if they're good families. They therefore hierarchy is the most natural state of a given society. Sure, we'll go with that. Okay. So then what are you mad at Peterson for? I think it largely comes down to like I mentioned before, I think looking back to these traditional concepts is a bad thing. Or at least to the degree that Peterson kind of wants to do them. What do you mean by that? Define, well, let, let me ask this. Define traditional for me. Um, traditional. I guess tradi 
question would be think views like. Are you saying Peterson's Judeo-Christian traditional hierarchy is is unhealthy? Is that what you're saying? Um, aspects of it certainly. Okay. Um, so it's like I, I don't know. I'm just like looking at um aspects of Peterson. So like Peterson obviously really um his, Peterson came to prominence because of C16. Yeah. Yep. Uh, like. Peterson's issue with C-16 to me is absolutely nonsensical. Uh, like, for Peterson, his idea was like, oh, I'm not going to talk, tell, you know, refer to these trans people as the pronouns that they want to be referred to as. And that just seems that wasn't, really rude, rude to me. That wasn't his argument at all. And what was his argument then? Because... He's explicitly stated that he has trans students and he refers to them by their preferred pronouns. Okay. What he was bothered by, and some of this has to do with his, his obsession with Solzhenitsyn and, and, and everything that went down in the USSR and, and Nietzsche to some degree. What he was bothered by was when the government starts compelling speech that it would it would lead to a 90, 1984 type society and that's what he was with regards to that how do you feel about protected classes well <laughs> do you think protected classes are a bad thing or a good thing it depends on how it's worked out in a given society I mean, all that this bill would do would put gender identity as a protected class in no, Canada no it was compelling speech that's not no, the same it's, thing it was it, it classified it as a protected class Therefore, by insulting this protected class in a harassing manner, then obviously the government would be able to do something because well, at that point you were, you know, going, um, you were attacking the, the class. No, because what they're saying is if you don't refer to this person by their preferred gender, that's a form of, of positive attack, which is, which is, okay, which is tantamount to the government compelling speech. So for me as a black person in America, there is nothing that you're supposed to call me. Like, I can't put you in jail for calling me black instead of an African American. I mean, subhanAllah, I've got people up in Maine who are still saying that I'm colored. But they can't go to jail for it, and they shouldn't. The government can't compel people to call me an African American. That's the problem. And when the government starts, when the government has the power to compel speech... That's an overreach because then it opens the door for the government to to do a whole bunch of shit. And in Peterson's mind, um, the only way to ascertain the truth is to speak it out loud and then have it tested by your given society. And so when the government starts dealing with out loud speech and telling you that you have to use a certain type of speech, it's a form of mind control. And that's what Peterson's against. You don't see that as valid at all? You think the government should be able to compel people's speech? The bill is intended to protect individuals from discrimination within the sphere of federal jurisdiction and from being the targets of hate propaganda. Okay, who defines what hate propaganda is? Uh, the government in this case, I suppose. Okay, so if the government determines that misgendering a person is hate propaganda, that's that's how is that different from compelling speech? Uh, hang on, I'm just reading something here. Evidence that an offense was motivated by bias, prejudice, or hate based on a person's gender identity or expression constitutes an aggravated circumstance for a court to consider. Who determines that? You know the irony in all of this? The government. You know the irony in all this? On the yeah. one hand, you were just arguing against hierarchy and the abuse of hierarchy. But then on the other hand, you're completely comfortable with the government telling people what they can and can't say. And the government defining what hate is and what it isn't. I mean, I'm not an anarchist, um, but I'm even in an anarchist society, you could still do this kind of stuff, um, because in that case, it would be more of a general will. Yeah, but but the government, I don't trust the government to define what hate is and what type of speech is and what propaganda is. I I would rather the people of a given culture being able to figure that out collectively as a consensus. That's not the job of the government to do that. 
the, the, we've, we've seen in history, when the government starts getting their hands in what people can and can't say, that's the first step to absolute tyranny. Well, I mean, we, we kind of already deal on that, don't we? What do you mean? Um... Uh, Hold on for a second. Lilo, Lilo, he read the bill to me. <laughs> what are you talking about? He you you were just reading it, right? Yeah. Okay. The summary. So it's been it's 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 read. It's been read. So so we don't need to go there, Lilo. What I'm saying is it's not the government's role to de to define what hate propaganda is and what hate speech is and then tell me what I have to say to a given person. Now, I had a 2-hour discussion with a trans person in our village and I'm not going to go I believe morally it's my job to do whatever I can to take care of my neighbors. And so if it's going to cause somebody severe pain and suffering to misgender them, I'm going to do my damnedest to make sure that I address them in a way that that's good for their soul. But it's not for the government to tell me to do that. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. I would disagree with that, at least. Well, so as a black uh, person, so as a black person, how would you address me? Um, I, as a, a black person, I guess. Oh shit, man! You're supposed to call me an African American. You're gonna have some like you want to go there. I mean, you want to go there. That's really different. What do you mean it's really different? Because not every black person is an African American. So, you're 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 obscuring the point. What I'm saying is, I've I'm come from a, a minority group that has suffered way more than the trans community has in the United States of America, right? Sure. Okay. So then, should I legislate how all black people in the country should be identified? And then on pain of losing your job or a heavy fine or even possibly jail time because it's quote unquote hateful. Like, do you actually want to go there? And why does it stop at trans people and black people? Why not white people? Why can't white people have those protections? Um, well, I mean, technically white people do have those protections. What? What are the hate speech laws that protect white people? is a protected class period okay but but i'm talking about i'm talking about a law analogous to this that will land you in jail for fucking with a white person i like it's it's there it's race, oh. race is okay. a protected class no, no, no i'm asking you for a specific law that's analogous to this that will land you in prison for 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 mis racing a white person for example I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm not seeing it. Well, you're not seeing it because it doesn't exist. It's inconsistent. That's what I'm saying. Being. No, like, I'm, I'm trying to, like, connect the dots that you're, you're doing, and it, it seems, like, I, I just seem to reductio ad absurdum. Yes, it is reductio ad absurdum. That's my point. That's the whole point of reductio ad absurdum, is to show how absurd the other position is. You, look... I think, you know, I've talked to trans people. I think they're big enough to be able to handle the random jerk that will that will purposely do dumb shit to them. For example, okay, so let's expand this. I had a vegetarian on the line, right? And and all these people started making all these meat-eating jokes. Well, that person interprets that action as hateful. Mm -hmm. They do. And the law, the law, wasn't the law... Correct me if I'm wrong, BM... Was it the law that you just read, leaving it up to the government to determine the motive of the person? Um, I believe so, yeah. Read it again. Uh, ben said, this is weird, but I actually agree with Ben. <laughs> uh, evidence that an offense was motivated by bias 
bias, prejudice, or hate based on a person's gender identity or expression constitutes an aggravated circumstance for a court to consider when imposing a criminal sentence. Motivated. So now the government is in some sort of divine position as to understanding what my motives are when I speak. Like, you don't see the problem there? I mean, it's, it, this would be an, in, a, in a court, although. So, it, like, you would still be tried by, by uh, your peers. What the hell does that have to do with anything? They're going to define what my motives were? So what if I say, no, my motives weren't hateful at all? Well, I mean... Who are they to tell me what my what, motives were? I, I mean, that's just an aspect of our, of our judicial system, though. Hey, look. You could say like I didn't actually kill some. What, like, what's what's the difference between manslaughter and murder? Isn't it motive? Well, if you can if you can establish a mens rea, that's not the same thing as a motive behind a person's speech. Because if if I if I can show that I hired a hitman, that 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 clearly demonstrates beyond a shadow of a doubt what my intent was. But that's not the same thing as misgendering a person. That's apples and oranges, my friend. I mean, it is, but also you got to keep in mind, it isn't just a matter of misgendering someone. It's harassing them repeatedly. There is way too much language in there that gives the government way too much power to police my speech and dig into my motives, my psychology, to make a judgment about me. And initially, I thought... Peterson was overreaching a little bit, to be honest with you. But now that I actually hear the language, I'm surprised that he's the only one that went off on this thing. Because this is madness. This is statism. Are you a statist? I mean... Okay, now it all makes sense. Possibly, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay, now... <laughs> So why the hell are you upset about Peterson being a hier hierarchalist, but you're a statist at the same time? Don't you see the contradiction there? I mean, okay, let's let's look at things from this perspective. Obviously, I think if society could move towards non-hierarchical things, that would be great. Is it going to happen? Probably not. Um, so I would favor uh, gradual moves towards uh, other things. Which just means that you're a statist because you don't trust the general populace. I mean, isn't that what you just said? Um, no, I think it's more that people aren't, they can't, they're not, they're not ready for it, so to speak. Like, we can't just dismantle the society and become anarcho-communists. That's, that's not going to happen. Bless ever. God. <laughs> that's that's, gonna, that's even less likely than the ANCAPs instituting anarcho-capitalism. Like, that's, that's it's just absurdity. <laughs> Look, if you you start controlling speech, you're controlling um, you're controlling minds. Somebody said that in the chat. That's that's not my that's not mine. That's somebody else. But if, if you control if you if you control speech, you're controlling minds because speech is simply the outgrowth of what happens in a mind. Look, somebody gets on here and calls me a nigger or something. Like for example, we had a guy named White Power Mother Effer. That was his name, right? Oh, uh, that was a thing. Yeah, that was his name, White Power. Like, so what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to like, like, completely ban the guy from my channel? You know what I did? I brought him up here and I let him spew his his bullshit, right? Because I I'm fully convinced that if somebody has a bad thought process, what we want them to do is express it as loud as they possibly can, so that everybody can see that it's a bad thought process. I'm not gonna go and censor the guy. I want him to speak. Those are the people that you want to speak so that you can shoot it down. It's only the fascists that limit people's speech. It's like Hitler. He wouldn't he he wouldn't countenance any disagreement with him. Now, that conversation with that kid turned into a it, it went in a different completely different direction, right? I don't know if you were there when we had that conversation. Do you remember I, that I, one? I was I was in the chat. Yeah, I mean I mean, you don't see any danger at all to this. You don't. You don't see this type of legislation going completely wrong. I personally don't. I, I just don't. Okay. I mean, have you read much on the USSR? Um, I honestly.
honestly, to, to imply that this will result in the USSR or Stalinism, just, I, I, I just, no. <laughs> okay. I mean, look, do you think... I, I think we're much more likely to go into Nazi Germany with, with someone like Trump right now. That's ridiculous. That we are going to the USSR. Nazi Germany. Yeah, look, look they, are, they are taking Trump's, anybody that's aligned with Trump. Do you see what happens to kids that are wearing MAGA hats in restaurants? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they get kicked out. Yeah, they get kicked out. They get yelled and screamed on. You have you have people in our in our government that are getting booted out of restaurants. But do you, you understand why that's happening? Uh, hold on for a second. The analogy between that and Nazi Germany is absolutely ridiculous. No way. I'm sorry, but right now we're much more closer to the USSR than we are to Nazi Germany. Hand over fist. It's not the the not, case with things like that is that these are individuals who are generally viewed as intolerant individuals, and you cannot tolerate intolerance in a tolerant society. It's, it's a paradox, <laughs> I'm aware, but it's it's, it's a contradiction. It's a reality. It's a contradiction. Yeah. And you and you know what it is, bro? Is these? It it's, appears to me, and when I say leftists, I'm not talking about you, because obviously we wouldn't be having this conversation if what I'm about to say is true. But these people who are yelling and screaming and not in actually engaging in intellectual conversation and say things like, we're not going to give hateful people or intolerant people a platform, they're doing that because they're not confident that they have enough argumentation in order to win a battle in the public square. I mean, the issue with something like that is generally, historically speaking, liberals side with fascists. It's true. So it's incredibly difficult to argue against a fascist because they will they will retreat to free speech. Like they will retreat to free speech and they will hug it and they'll hold it like uh, like in a boxing match or whatever when they just grab onto the other person. Like they will just hug it despite the fact that all they really really want is to just destroy that free speech. They absolutely detest free speech, but they'll they'll, they'll cling to it because it's the only thing that protects them and will get liberals on their side. Okay. So so that's that's what's happening in our country. It's the left is the side that's that's trying to silence as much speech as possible. It's not the right. I mean, because the right speech basically wants massive intolerance. That's insane. So, what? so for instance, okay, let's look at say Richard Spencer. Yeah. Are you familiar with Richard Spencer? Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think happened to Unite the Right? What do you mean, what do I think happened unite, to Unite the Right? Okay, so you had Unite the Right happened, and there was a, that massive fascist party and everything, and then the guy beamed his car into that woman. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Did you see the video? Where James Fields drove his car into the crowd? Did you see the video? He didn't drive his car into the crowd. His car was surrounded by the crowd and people were yelling and screaming at him. Now, I'm not defending this guy. But the facts are, to, 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 categor- to, to speak about it as if he's just some random skinhead yeah. who drove into a group of innocent people isn't, isn't with the facts. The facts are, he was surrounded by a bunch of people and in his, his, def- his lawyer is saying it was a case of panic and self-defense. Now, I, I'm not saying I can't judge w- what's going on there because we're not in the case, but don't act like it was just some regular regular dude who just ran into a bunch of people on purpose. That's not what happened. Um, I guess we'll see what happens with the case in that case. Um, but either way... Well, there's so, video. Uh, watch the... If you see watch the, the video. video. Watch right. the video, my guy. We'll see what the case has to say, I guess. Okay. But... Either way, so after all of that happened, um, and Antifa started doing a lot more of their activities, um, we now have, a year later, they had Unite the Right 2. And did you see how many people attended Unite the Right 2? I'm sure it was much smaller. Uh, There was about 28, I think. Okay. Um, The large 
reason for far less of them showing up was because they did not want to be associated. They did not want to lose their job by coming out. They did not want to be doxxed. They did not want all these things to happen to them. Yeah. Because groups like Antifa have significantly raised the social cost of being a Nazi. Whoa, 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 whoa. Groups like Ant... <laughs> I cannot believe that you're you're acting like that's a good thing. Like Antifa is a force for good in a, in the United States of America. One hundred percent. Are you? Have you heard what Antifa has said about our own constitution? Um, Antifa is just a group of lots and lots of people. <laughs> There's no leader of Antifa. Oh, here we go. Look. The, I mean, maybe if, if you want to source me, like, some uh, Antifa Twitter or something that's probably run by, like, Russians or something, I mean, you could do that. Okay, but, so this is this like, is more Trumpism, so anything that you don't want to hear is fake news. No, like, uh, for instance, recently, a quote-unquote Denver Antifa posted a video of a bunch of people saying, like, yeah, we're training to fight Nazis or whatever, and the photo was, like, some Finnish youth group. Like, no, 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 uh, no. It's no. well known that there are fake Antifa Twitters and whatnot made by uh, by right wingers. Yeah, that's it's, really it, well known. <laughs> it's also well known that there is a very violent strain to Antifa and a very anti-American, anti-constitution, pro-communist strain to Antifa as well. Well, yeah, Antifa is made of anarcho anarchists and communists. That's oh. that's what the flag is. Okay, and they've been violent. They've enacted violence in our culture. Are you okay? They enact violence against fascists. That, that's what they do. Okay, so they get. So who determines, objectively speaking, who the fascists are that Antifa gets to physically assault? Uh, the people supporting the fascists. The people <laughs> acting like fascists. So then, if I say, if I say, so then, if a person says anybody who's against Donald Trump is a fascist. And we now have green light to go and physically assault them. That's okay. Uh, you're you're not understanding. Like, no, 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 no. These no. kind of questions aren't um, that simple. No, what you're what you're just, trying to just say because I say X is a fascist doesn't mean that X is a fascist. So what you're saying is you don't believe that people have the right to free speech without the threat of violence if it qualifies as quote-unquote fascist in your mind. Is that what you're saying? Say that one more time. People don't have the right to free speech without the threat of violence if it qualifies as quote-unquote fascistic in your mind. Is that what you're saying? If the person is preaching anti-Semitism and is screaming things like, um, uh, what was one line that one of the guys screamed? He said the... Uh, the first precept of the true alt-right is gas the kikes, race war now. Uh, if someone's saying things like that, like that's that's a fascist. So then you, you, instead of saying, let's defeat them in the public square with our words, you're saying they have the right to physically assault them is what you're saying. As I told you, you generally can't really beat fascists in the public square because liberals will side with them. <laughs> So, because you can't beat them, we should beat them. Like, how badly should we kill them? Uh, you basically beat them until they cannot... You, as I mentioned, you raise the social cost. Yeah, but this, let's say the social cost is your life. Then instead of 28 people, you'll have two people. Is that better? I mean, generally speaking, Antifa tends to not kill people. Right-wingers do the killing. No, 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 no. Right wingers, <laughs> right wingers, right now aren't going around in uh, hit squads and physically assaulting people. Do, do, do you want me to like? That's Antifa. You the Southern Poverty Law Center's group of list of like hate crimes. Antifa is organized. You've got an organized group of people who are stalking people that they determine to be fascist. All I want to know is, is it okay if Antifa kills people? If that will make it so that the next unite the right. March has only two people. I mean, <coughs> killing is probably a bad thing. Probably a bad thing. Are you hearing yourself right now? <laughs> killing is generally a bad thing, sure. Wow. <laughs>
You are an absolute statist. <laughs> listen, listen, bro. You're an absolute statist, and I don't... Have you ever been outside of the United States? Uh, yeah. I went to... I visited London and France once. Okay. So you, you've never you, you've never been outside of a, a country that, that that's outside of uh, Western influence. Like, you've never uh, been to these... Sure. You've never been in these post-USSR European states, have you? No. So you don't, you don't know what it's like. You know, all these Antifa people, I'm not saying you're one of them, but there's all these kids in Antifa running around talking about uh, Chairman Mao and all this shit who have no fucking clue what communism I mean, is really about. General, I, I, like, I know some Antifa individuals. None of them are, are, are Maoists. Are you talking about, like, Jason Unruh? No. What I'm talking about is... That guy's a really crazy guy. Here's no what I'm like talking him. about. It's a, bunch of, it's a bunch of kids who were born and raised in America most of whom have no fucking clue about the world outside of their little bubble in America, who are self-righteously taking up the cause of violence because they don't have the intellectual rigor to be able to confront somebody in the public square and debate their topics accurately. And because they feel that they're more intelligent than the rest of the American community, they feel that they it's on them to go and physically assault other Americans thereby stealing their right of free speech away from them because the rest of us are too dumb to be able to see that racism and, and, and fascism is a bad thing. That's Antifa. Those are the people you're supporting. I mean, if you really want to put it that way, sure. I mean, like I said, my general thought is anyone who's legit supporting um fascist ideas generally deserves no platform and you and you believe and you don't see that the threat of violence that you just justified against speech you don't see that as a form of fascism itself absolutely not because there's nothing racist about it there's nothing nationalist about it there's it's idealist you're an idealist and the ist meaning the discrimination side of it and here's the problem with, with people like you. And when I p mean people like you, I, 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 here's what I mean. You're the intellectual side of these people. But the facts are, people like that in those movements, you're the minority. And who gets to decide what the line is between which fascists you get to assault? Like, who decides that? Um, I mean, it's generally not... How can I put it this way? It's generally not really decided. It's kind of just if it's happening or not. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But if it, somebody has to determine what it is, when you say what, when it is happening, somebody has to know when it is. When is it it? When is fascism happening? When is somebody vocalizing hate speech where we need to attack them? And is there is there a canonical definition for that in people in that crew? There isn't, is there? So then I can be part of Antifa and just feel like a dude walking around with a MAGA hat as a fascist, even if he doesn't do anything, and I can physically assault him, and that's okay. I mean, I would say no. But there's no leader in Antifa, so who are you to tell me what to do? Right? So you would say no, and that's your opinion. You don't attack him, but I say yes. That's how it works, though. Huh? That's just not how it works, though. How do you know how it works? Is there some Antifa uh, 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 guidebook that c you can show us that tells what, what people we can assault and which people we can't? I mean, generally what Antifa does is, like I said, they just try to raise the social cost. Yeah, how is that different from what I just said? So, let's say... Do you believe that Trump represents fascism? Uh, I think he has a lot of fascist supporters. Okay. Do you do you believe that Make America Great Again is a dog whistle to racist fascists? Uh, to some of them, yeah. Okay. So then, so then there's no real epistemic warrant for you to say that if I wanted to attack or physically assault a person with a MAGA hat, 
mean, there, there's the reality no... is that just because someone has the MAGA hat on doesn't necessarily mean that they, um, you know, quite understand what they're what they're dealing with. I suppose. Well, well, I need to raise the social costs for the people that do. So whether or not this person knows what they're doing, if it's on camera, then I'm fucking somebody up that's wearing a MAGA hat. I just raise the social cost, right? Um, I mean, I see where you're going with it. It's just, it just, it just doesn't really happen. What do you, <laughs> what I'm saying is, and you just admitted, there's no way for you, even from your own perspective to say that I can't do that. Is there? Because if it's about using violence to raise a social cost for having the wrong ideology, then that accomplishes that goal, doesn't it? Right? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll let you have the last word. This is some terrifying shit. And I'm, look, yeah. look, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I don't agree. I'm very, very concerned with um, what's happening with the right wing of, of America. And the reason I'm concerned is because of, 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 of Antifa. Because you make people almost impossible to reason with when you start using violence. Because here's the thing. These people on the right wing, they're all packing weapons. <laughs> they all have guns. And there's nothing more dangerous than the human ego. You think that these kids, these little 16, 17 year old kids are going to be able to physical assault? You, you think like if they came to my hood and did some shit like that, they'd be able to get out of there alive? Um, I mean... It these kids are going to mess with the. Yes or no? You're going to mess I mean, with. It, it depends. You're going to mess with the wrong redneck, and they're going to blow you away on national TV. And then what's going to happen is, people are going to start applying your principle in reverse and start raising the cost of hanging out with Antifa. And there's much more of them than there is of of punk kids in Antifa. Believe me, because here's the thing: you got a guy like me, right? who obviously has a vested interest in, in, in minimizing racism in the United States of America. I sent my kid, I sent my 12-year-old to go get pizza one time on his bike, and I was scared to death that he was going to have a running with some police officer. Now, whether that's rational or irrational, my point is, I was scared until I got the text that he was back home safe. So, I have a much more vested interest in making sure that racism is out of our country than you do by spades, my man. Believe me, I've got a lot more to lose. But when you start talking about physically assaulting people because they're vocalizing ideology or their ideas, you cross the line. That is crossing the line. That's completely anti-American and completely a state. And so it's crazy to me that you were like mocking, oh, we're nowhere near the USSR. And then you talk about justifying violence against speech. And you don't see the correlation there at all? I mean, the argument here would be that these are individuals whose speech itself is, is capable of inciting violence. Yeah, there's inciting violence and there's actual violence. And you guys also, are committing actual violence. But also inciting, if your speech incites violence, then that, that doesn't fall under free speech. Well, look, most of these people are saying that we need to care about white people and white people have been left behind and all the rest of it. You can hardly... Do you think Gas the Kikes race war now is, is insightful toward hateful speech? No, I don't... No, I, I think that that's hateful speech, but I think that if a person says that publicly... For example, you talked about doxing. I don't have a problem with that. If you're gonna If you're going to walk around doing the Hitler thing, then we need to know who you are. And then let the let the community handle that person. That's what doxing is. It's like, oh shit, you're a Nazi. You're not going to represent our company. Get the fuck out of here. Like that's how America's supposed to operate, not the yeah. government. That is how Antifa also operates. Though. Okay, that I don't care about. What I care about is you justifying people physically assaulting other human beings. That's my problem. That's not for you to do. That's fascism. I. I really do not see that as being fascism <laughs> okay well you like need you need to read a, is a thing you need to read a, you need to read about the ussr 
and you need to travel to post-communist countries, and you tell, you describe to them what you're talking about, and see what they tell you. Have you read any Solzhenitsyn? I mean, you could argue that it's it's in a way authoritarian or whatever, but it's it's not fascism. Have you read any Solzhenitsyn? No. Okay, my friend, the fascists didn't start out sending people to the gulags immediately. That's not how it started. It's not how it started. You you should you should do some more historical research because the shit that all these kids are caught up in, you know rocking all this shit about Che Guevara and all this other shit. They have no idea what they're doing. They've, they've, they've been born and raised in America. They have no idea what the world is about at all. If you've been to London, I'm sorry. You don't know what the world is about. This is madness. What you're talking about is absolute madness. I, I tell you what. I will read... Uh, give me a specific book. The Gulag Archipelago. Okay. Alexander... Alexander Solzhenitsyn. What am I reading? I would like you to read Dialectic of Enlightenment. Dialectic. Of, okay. Can you I'll, can you I'll write that down? Text it to you. Who's 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 the author? I believe it's Theodore Adorno, a a uh, cultural Marxist actually. Okay. All right. Here, type it because. Hold on. Hold on. Do it again. Dialectic of what? It's, uh, what is it, uh, Max Horkheimer and Theodore Adorno. All right, I promise you, I'm, I'm going to go dig into that. Okay. All right, my man, I'll let you have the last word. I mean, like I said, to, to me, I think, if we're looking at actual fascism and notions of, say, ethnostates and, you know, all this kind of racial type stuff I I just don't see there being any platform for this kind of stuff I mean obviously like we can disagree on that I just see no platform for, for this kind of stuff and as you kind of see reading that uh, liberalism basically supports will support fascism and it's, it's a big issue because like how essentially we're just doomed to a cycle really um, like we will inevitably end up in another period of, of, of fascism uh, as long as we really have liberalism. Um, okay. Uh, I, don't, I guess that's, that's about it, I suppose. Oh, and I just wanted to say one other thing. Okay. Um, so part of the reason that you have, say, all those people screaming at people like Candace Owens and whatnot and, and all those people in MAGA hats getting kicked out of um, uh, restaurants and whatnot. Like, you understand why that can happen, correct? Of course it can happen. It's America. They can do that. I know, but, like, part of the reason that that happens is because political ideology is not a protected class. <laughs> well, white political ideology is not a protected class. I mean, political ideology period is not so like if if let's say a bunch of dsa members went to a thing like theoretically that company could kick out all those dsa members or something like that uh it just happens to be most of these people tend to obviously um uh, not be on the side of the right and so they have the authority uh to to it just uh, it just it, out. It, it just so happens yeah i mean they have the authority to do that go for it i mean it's america they can do anything they want. I mean, I, I, I don't think it's good social strategy because it, it, it confirms probably false narratives that um, uh, right-wingers have, and it pushes people like me who go back and forth between left and right over onto the right side. I think it's terrible social strategy, but it's definitely within their rights to do it. I mean, to that regard, I would say that if anything is pushing you in a direction, that's probably not what you should be doing. Like, um, what is this? Like when people say, oh, like, look at the left, they're doing all these things, so I'm going to leave the left and move to the right. Like, that that seems really bad to me. Well, that's... that's... I mean, even going, <laughs> going, going like, likewise, you know? 
<laughs> I mean, that's fine. I'm talking to you about human nature. I'm saying it's bad social strategy. And it's going to backfire. And honestly, when I see shit like that, I go, oh, okay, so Trump 2020, these people are never going to learn. That's all it does with me. It, it's, it's that, it, it, it's, it, it amazes me that leftists are in such echo chambers. Not all leftists, but the leftists who justify this stuff. They're in such an echo chamber that nobody's stopping to say, you know what, maybe this is bad social strategy. I mean, the argument would be the reality that Unite the Right 2 only had like 28 people would indicate, for us at least, that it is a good strategy. <laughs> okay. Unite the Right is less than 0.02% of our population. Unite the Right is not what got Trump elected. Regular people out in the Rust Belt who feel forgotten and oppressed are the ones that got Trump elected. And when they see the shit that leftists are pulling, all you're doing is galvanizing them. And what you're doing is you're making people, you're, you're giving Trump enough ammo to say, forget about my bullshit policies and the shit that I fucked up. Look at these people. And you're giving those people enough excuses to get distracted from the real issues. And that's why I think it's a terrible social strategy. Yeah. I mean, I think for, say, those Rust Belt people, I think the real question is, are those Rust Belt people doing any better now than they were before? Yeah, but... And the, I think that answer would be a clear no. My guy, that's exactly the conversation that needs to happen. What you're not understanding is, when they see white people getting assaulted by black people for wearing MAGA hats, and when they see white people getting booted out of restaurants... You now you have now lost the ability to reason with that argument because of what just happened. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. That's why it's bad social strategy. Let the people sit in the restaurant so that you could take that weapon away from Trump and then now you can reason with the Rust Belt people. But as long as you're doing this shit, I guarantee you, you're going to have Trump for another four years. You're not understanding. You didn't learn the lesson. Because I agree with you. I think you're right. But that, but the intellectual rigor that you want to apply to these voters, you're not applying to your, your side. And so what's happening is you guys are doing all this inflammatory shit and you're providing so much bulletin board material for Trump that you're not understanding the peril that this puts into the next election. You don't see that as a problem at all. It's quite to the. How can I put this? I don't think it's quite um, as big a deal as you think it is. Okay. But I mean, I, I suppose, you know, maybe. Uh, actually, recently, um, I just read, uh, not read, I listened to a podcast from uh, Zero Books. Uh, they're kind of like. Um, I guess like a leftist uh, book publisher. Okay. And the podcast Wait, sorry, is sorry. actually Hold largely on. about kind of what you're saying. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, stop. Yeah. What's the name yeah. of this podcast? Zero Books. Say again? Zero Books. Zero Books. Z-E-R-O. Okay, go ahead. Um, and uh, the, the episode is called, um, uh, is there like a mass Antifa movement or whatever? And the kind of argument was actually against, um, uh, because, like, the alt-right has kind of been killed now, as, as a result of Unite you know, the Right 2, we should be, instead of kind of focusing on that, we should be shifting the, the conversation towards things like universal health care and things like that, and kind of less focusing on, on that kind of stuff. And basically pushing towards, you know, uh, social democratic uh, programs and, and policies. Okay. I agree. I agree totally. Why don't you do that instead of kicking old ladies out of uh, restaurants, my guy? I, I, I guess we'll just have to see. All right. All, All right, right, man. I, you guys. I appreciate the sources. I love you, my guy. Even though I was disagreeing with you, I love you to death. I mean, it's, it's definitely... Um, 
like obviously there are all these people talking in the chat or whatever. It's definitely a different feeling when you're talking, actually on uh, on uh, on Skype. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Then then just yeah. in the chat. Um, also, because like I'll I'll admit most of most of these kind of topics and whatnot, it's it's so easy to say like watch this hour long YouTube video, <laughs> like watch this other hour long YouTube video, uh, and actually having to to. Uh, discuss these things in, in greater detail is, is a lot more difficult because it's, um, you know, you bring up things that, that you, you haven't really thought about or you things that you kind of just assumed to kind of just not be the case, you know? No, I, I hear you. Anybody who calls in, I have the utmost respect for them. I mean, it, it's it's not as easy as people think it is, especially with me. Good Lord. All right, my guy. I love you. I think somebody else is calling up. All right, I love you. Also, one more thing. Go ahead. Uh, where's Despel Omega? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's on my short list. What the fuck? We did Batushka? No, seriously. We did <laughs> Alagok or whatever. Hey, bro, can you tell me how to pronounce that band properly? Uh, I believe it's Agalok. Agalok. It's literally, it's on my short list here. I, I'm not going to, I'm going to move that because it's very, sh I don't want people seeing, but it's, it's. <laughs> yeah. Despel's on there? Yeah, Despel Omega. I saw it in the um, when I was going around, and I'm like, oh my gosh, we we are so behind on that one. Okay, so we did Batushka, we did Agal. What's wrong with you? <laughs> so. All right. Yeah, it's on the way. Yeah, I seriously want to do like a week of like underground shows of bands we haven't done. So. I thought we were gonna keep that. I not tell people. No, I that this was my idea, and I, I never had an idea of keeping that a secret from people. I wanted to tell them. I wanted to build the excitement. Sorry, when are you going to argue with someone on here? I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get off now. All right, All right see right, ya. My guy. Have, a good, have a good one, buddy. I got my, uh, got my ass kicked a bit, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my guy. Have a good one.